And I, I'm also in California, and um, I, I just remember a lot of the ads for for you know for the Prop 22. I was like watching them. I'm like, it was completely the opposite of what they were seeing yes. in the commercial, and I was just like, it is it is just disgusting. But it it kind of is a good segue. What I want to talk about next, which is propaganda, and mm. I, I I agree with with Malcolm X, and I forget his his is a quote but propaganda to me is the most strongest thing and is the thing that's keeping the ruling class in place that's keeping the oligarch in place and keeping people misinformed where people are voting against their own interests like the person you're voting for so for example if black people want anything to be done to the police state you don't elect the person who wrote the 1994 bill. <laughs> That's California's top five. You understand the level of brainwashing that has to come about in order for a person to do that. And that's the reason why I say propaganda is the thing, is the thing that's keeping America in this place. And it's also the reason they're coming after the left. They're telling on themselves. It's coming after the left because they know information is the value in, or correct information, I should say. Correct right. information is the value so what are your what are your guys's assessment of american propaganda and how it plays into keeping everybody where they are and how do we get out of that i'll, I'll start with you Justin. yeah no uh, everything you said is 100 percent on point and it's even gotten to the you know to the level where there are you know we think about something like twitter or youtube like now they're starting to cordon people off right they're saying, okay, there's this algorithm we have together where you're just going to see, you know, people that are in your, you know, that have your same thought process, right? It essentially is an echo chamber. But now, because these, you know, corporations that are, you know, Twitter, Facebook, they don't want to get regulated. They're going to just do whatever the, you know, ruling class tells them to do and whatever the politicians tell them to do, like you said, extension of the corporation. And so I think the, the remedy for that, I think, is we have to start actually having conversations with people we don't agree with. We have to actually start and stop being afraid to, to get in some type of, you know, uncomfortable like confrontational type of, of, uh, of, you know, conversation. Um, you know, I think there's a lot, there, there's this, there's this idea where, you know, anyone that doesn't agree with you or has a slightly different opinion on something is this deplorable or too far gone and you can't have a conversation with them, you know, th and it's starting to happen on Twitter, even within the left. It's like guilt by association. Oh, you nominally agree with this one person on one thing. Oh, all of a sudden you agree with them on everything. You're, you know, you're associated with them. So I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not, you know, that like, I'm sure y'all have seen that on the left and it's, it's sad that it's actually infecting the left as well now. So I think the biggest thing for me is like, I'll talk to whoever, like, I don't care. I want to have a conversation with you because I've had conversations with people who I, who I was close with from college or whatever. And they thought Bernie was some crazy radical five months later. You know, I had a conversation with them, just talking with them as people five months later, they're coming back. Now they're, you know, they're like, well, shit, Bernie's not even radical enough for me. Like that's the type of shit you have to do on the grassroots level you know, to, to, to make sure, you know, we kind of are seeing past this propaganda like you were talking about and seeing that we're not nearly as different as they want to uh, want to make it seem. In fact, we're a lot more similar to each other. They're the ones that are different. They're exactly. the ones that have all this money that they're trying to, you know, they're going to use now to, to buy off politicians to ensure that you and your family can't get ahead, that you and your family will always be living on the margins in poverty, right? So I think we just, we have to break through. We have to break through that. That's why I'm, I'm really, you know, excited to be on this program with y'all. You know, I'm definitely going to have y'all on my program to talk more about it. But, you know, I think we just have to make sure we're, you know, boosting each other up and, and spreading this message as far and wide as we can. Because, what you know, what else do we have? Like, we used to have social media, but now you can't even get one of your videos to go viral because they've had, you know, all these algorithms put into place where they're going to just make sure that just your subscribers see it. And no one on the homepage who's just looking around, maybe get, just get into politics, see it, you know. Maybe I never would have got into lefty politics if, if it was how you know how it is right now when i was first looking for you know a medium to to, to kind of grow my political mind so i think it's really important that we just you know continue to have these conversations and not be afraid to talk to people like like when did that become a I thing think, you know i, I hate that so weird. Justin, I had, Justin, I, I got into a live show well no I, let me rephrase this i had a lot of 
uh, CIA left is get mad at me. When I say that, I'm, I'm not saying they're part of the CIA. The I'm CIA. saying they are engaging in strategy the CIA would love to see. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not including the one piece in the CIA, but they don't, you don't, they don't need to recruit you in the CIA because you're doing the work for them. So these are the people who got mad at me because I said I am willing to accept help from anyone on my terms. The people are like, oh, so you want to work with right wing supremacists? You want to work with racists? And I'm like, hey, white lib, I'm not sure you're not racist, by the way. <laughs> How you? Mm-hmm. Why are you assuming that I think you're not racist? You got a lot <laughs> to prove to me. Right. The, the show. So I'm already working with you because I'm like, all right, you agree with me on some issues, but I'm not sure what you really think. I'm not sure if you're really Amy Cooper <laughs> that was like call call the cops on us. And you know what I noticed, Justin? Mm-hmm. I noticed that the people who get mad at us for uh, claiming that we want to talk to right wingers or anyone who's who open to help us accomplish our goals, I look at look at their location on Twitter. Never fails. New York, New York, California. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I live in Missouri, and I sold cars mm. in Kansas. I mean, deep red Kansas. So these mm. these these, prog- these progressives, the or you want to call them live either way. Me, they live in New York. They live in California. They live in their box. So yeah. they view anyone having a conversation with outside that box to be too far gone. But they don't understand that when I, me, who live in a red state, we have no choice but to talk to these people. We just talk about ballot issues, right? Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, you will work with the Boogaloo boys? We work with all the far right ra- races? Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? So let me let me propose a scenario I always propose to them. We talk about ballot initiatives, right? Imagine if you had, and we don't use really easy numbers here. You need 1,000 uh, signatures in order to expand Medicaid, which will help my, gran- uh, my grandma significantly. You have 980 signatures. But then there's 20 racist or boogaloo boys who are like, yeah, I should need Medicare expansion too. Do you deny those signatures and not get <laughs> Medicare expansion? So when people get mad exactly. when we propose to work with these people, they are deeply unserious. Because this is the reality of political uh, activism. You need to get those signatures in your red state, but these people that live in blue states, they're so out of touch, they'd rather just shut those people out because they think they can win otherwise. Meanwhile, people like me who live in Missouri, we got no choice. So I'm like, if you get mad at me, fuck off. I don't care because you guys are being ridiculous. And one last, one last thing, I'll, I'll toss it right back to you, CJ, because this goes back to propaganda, and this goes back to talking to people. Because if you listen to media, you would not know this fact. I'll tweet about this as well. You guys know that Joe Biden is to the right of 56% of Republicans on health care? Repu- 56% of Republicans support public the public option. And then it gets even worse. Even worse. One out of four Republicans support Medicare for all. So one out of four Republicans outflank Joe Biden and Democratic Party on the issue of health care. Mm-hmm. But you guys tell me that well, I should support the Democratic Party and vote for them but not talk to the right wingers who want universal health care? That doesn't track for me. I talked to you, CJ. Well, let me let me just say that they expose themselves too because these are the same people that would always praise Bernie. Oh, he works with someone who's super far right wing like Mike Lee or Rand Paul, right? On certain issues, he would work with those people if we have the same interests. Right. right. And it's on my terms. I'll work with you if it's on my terms. So you're telling me if there's a boogaloo boy that's out there at a BLM protest actually protecting um, the protesters from the cops, which is why we're protesting in the first place, you're going to be like, actually, no, y'all can stay over there. We don't want y'all a part of this coalition. Right. Or if there's someone who you disagree with on 90 percent of the issues, but they want to end wars, you're going to be like, actually, no, let's keep the troops in Afghanistan because I don't like you personally and i don't like you know some things that you believe so we're not just we're, i'm just not gonna work with you how yeah. how has anything ever changed that way it's the ridiculous. cia loves what they do the cia loves that loves their strategy sorry go ahead Justin. It, no it, it helped like they don't understand that they're helping the establishment they're helping the status quo they're helping things stay exactly as you are exactly as as it is and it sucks because we have like the people are actually progressive. The people are actually at a point where they've broken through the propaganda and people can see that, you know, there would be a Fox News poll and 70% of the people, even though they loaded the question and said government run health care, they'll still say they want it because they're being screwed right now. It's, it's gotten to such a level where yes. people are being fucked so bad by the system that they're they're even if they're still ingesting that bullshit media. That is that is ensuring, you know, and further entrenching the fucking that's happening to them on certain policies. They'll still say, OK, I don't 
I don't care who's supporting this policy. Who does. I want this policy to pass. So I'm going to support it. And yeah. we're leaving those people. We're just saying, no, nah, fuck that. We're, we're going to put them to the margins. We don't want to talk to them. We don't want to be around them. We don't want them a part of our coalition. Well, good luck. <laughs> good luck getting anything done that way. Good for America. Luck. They they come. They they don't have to get anything done. Part of the status quo. That's because they're not they're not part of the formula of keeping the status quo. That's why they really could care less. But when people say, "I won't work with that person or that person," this is my response all the time. Black people, ever since landing on this this continent, have had to work with people that absolutely hate our guts. So if black people took that same stance, we're not going to work with anybody who's racist, who would black people work with? <laughs> black I'm going to forget. Who I black people work with? It doesn't make any sense. Black people don't have the privilege to say we don't want to work with this person or that person or this person who doesn't like me. We don't have that privilege. 